Oliver Slope. He's with Blue Line Futures, and he joins us right now to take a look at our markets. So we are seeing money flow take control of the market right now, and I wouldn't be surprised to see that continue through today's session. If the World Platinum Council said that there could be a supply deficit next year, and guess what? The U.S. dollar keeps going lower. It's going to bring a tailwind to, com to commodities. We're going to see as, as well China continue to stack their reserves, and then this new uh, administration with the green initiatives is all a tailwind for, for platinum. I think that could be in the cards as, as platinum breaks out of a 10-year downtrend. One thing I, I've been talking about uh, with you over recent weeks and months is, is that we are bullish. We think crude oil is going higher. The value area was 35 bucks, and it, and it did get, get into there. We've moved up through 45 near uh, some big resistance at 46 and a half. But ultimately, we're settling in nicely. This is this is very constructive on a technical basis. Listen, it's all about position sizing. I, I am adding two positions within a portfolio mandate, or I'm trading crude oil and my futures with the mandate of, of defined risk. Now, so corn was able to stabilize here after holding technical support, which we had listed as 408 and three quarters, 413 and a half. That is a four star level for us. And as mentioned in this morning's report, now, if you're bullish, this is the pocket to be buying into. And if you've been bearish and been short, this is a spot to lighten up. I do think that we will have a deal. And, and But the problem is the market is already anticipating it. Now, I am bullish. And I think the path of least resistance is higher on, for stocks. But one thing, again, what are the market's expectations? And that $2 trillion headline that everybody had for months uh, is, is now dissipating. And uh, the market's going to have to settle for a bit less. And, and then when they do get it, is it going to be a buy the rumor, sell the news event? And this is the week that reminds everybody that gold is not dead here. Hollywood writers could not have scripted last week any better. We saw the break below, tremendous support at 1850. We saw a move into options expiration right around the round 1800. And then we flushed on the futures expiration for December at the end of last week into Monday. And now the cleansing is over. We can rebuild and begin to repair. I wouldn't chase it, though, uh, into 1850. I'm looking for a little pullback into 1850. 25. The U.S. dollar certainly kind of been in the spotlight here for the last several months as it continues to drift lower and make multi-year lows, and I think you're seeing that really kind of help support the export business. We obviously didn't see that in this morning's export sales report, but I think over the last two months you could make the case that it certainly has. Um, the demand has been strong, but we need to see that continue for this market to really keep this rally going forward. We need to feed the bull, so to speak. If there's a gap from November 23rd that we're keeping a close eye on that comes in a little bit closer towards 111. Cash so far this week is really nothing to write home about, and it sounds like the optimism around the cash market is starting to fade a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a lid on feed or live cattle take us back and fill that gap close to 111. At that point, I'd be interested in being a buyer, but probably more so in the deferreds looking out to April. You're correct, and the streaming is done, the heavy lifting, even before the pandemic, and during it. But make no mistake here, this obviously is a reopening narrative. I mean, look what it, the stock did on March 9th. It surged out above that pandemic September high, but it's, it's continued to hold very good technical ground. I like what I see technically.